welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री इम्पॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत नेमली अव्यय भाव समास बहुव्रीही समास and dvandva samasa right now we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa the features of the avyayi bhava samasa can be explained in the form of a small equation stated on this particular slide here you have x and y as two separate two independent entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent x is a different word form it has got its own features it can be connected to any other word form so also is y so also is the meaning of x as well as y independent separate unit also the accent that x has is independent and also the accent y has is also independent now x and y are semantically interrelated now the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge x and y together and generate an output in the form of x y which is one unit so the input is two entities x and y and the output is one unit which is xy now this output is also stated philosophically to be different than its constituents x and y but generally this one unit is shown to be interrelated to its constituents and therefore in terms of the constituents we say that amongst x and y x acts as the head of this particular avyay bhava samasa and therefore x is put in the bold characters now invariably without a few exceptions x in the avyay bhava samasa is the avyaya and formally x by as one unit and avyay bhava samasa also is termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha so x is an avyaya and xy is also an avyaya y need not be an avyaya in fact y is not an avyaya so this is how x becomes the head and it shapes the formal behavior of xy semantically also when xy is linked to any other meaning in the sentence meaning that linkage happens only through the meaning of x and never through the meaning of y this is how x acts as the head in the avyayi bhava samasa avyayi bhava samasa is treated in the ashtadhyayi in different places firstly there are samasa vidhayaka sutras generally samasa vidhayaka sutra that stated in 2.1 and 2.2 for the avyayi bhava samasa such sutras which lay down the conditions which lay down the semantic conditions under which the processing of the avyayi bhava 
compound takes place, they are stated in 2.1 precisely between 2.1.5 that is avyayi bhavaha and 2.1.21 including that is anyapadarthecha saudnyayam. Incidentally, 2.1.22 is Tatpurushaha and from that sutra onwards, the Tatpurusha Samasa is dealt with in detail which we have already studied in the first course on Samasa in this particular series. So we can say that the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras as far as the Avyayabhava Samasa is concerned are found in this small section which begins with 215 and ends with 2121. Then the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras, Sutras which prescribe the suffix which comes at the end of the Samasa, they are stated in a small section starting with 54107 up to 54112. The Swara Vidhayaka Sutras, namely the sutras which prescribe the accent, they are stated in 6.2 and the ones which are related to the Avei Bhava Samasa are like 6.2.1.2.1 etc. This is how Avei Bhava Samasa is treated in the Ashtadhyayi. Currently we are focused on the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras related to the Avei Bhava Samasa. We started with Avyayi Bhavaha, then we also studied the big sutra containing so many semantic conditions, namely Avyayam, Vibhakti, Samipa, Samruddhi, Vridhyartha, Bhava, Tyaya, Sampati, Sakalya, namely Avyayam, Vibhakti, Samipa, Samruddhi, Vridhyartha, Bhava, Tyaya, Sampati, Shabda, Pradur, Bhava, Paschad Yathanu Purvya Yogapadya Sadrishya Sampati Sakalyanta Vachaneshu. Then we have studied several other sutras as well, and now we come to the end of this particular section, and in this lecture we shall study the remaining sutras in this particular Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra section. Two one twenty is Nadi Bhishcha and two one twenty one is Anyapadarthecha Saudnyayam. These two sutras we shall study in this particular lecture. First, let us study two one twenty, Nadi Bhishcha. In this sutra, there are two padas, Nadi Bhihi and Cha. Nadi Bhihi is Tritiya Bahuachana or three slash three of Nadi, which means a river, a river name. Nadi bhihi means with the river names. Cha means and. Words continued are avyayam from 216, sahasupa from 214, samasaha from 213, avyayi bhavaha from 215, samarthapadavidhi from 211, vibhasha from 211, and most importantly, sankhya which means a number, a numerical, from the previous sutra, Sankhya Vamshyena. Now the word Sankhya is in Prathama Vibhakti and thereby it is termed as Upasarjana on account of the sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam 1-243 and then by the sutra Upasarjanam Purvam 2-30, this Upasarjana occupies the initial position in the Samasa. Having put all these things together, we get the following meaning. A subanta denoting number is compounded with another semantically related subanta which denotes the name of a river optionally and the resultant samasa is called a vyayi bhava. I repeat, a subanta denoting number is compounded with another semantically related subanta which denotes a river optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, a subanta denoting number, sankhya subantam, is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta, samarthena subantena saha, 
which denotes the name of a river nadi bhi optionally va and the resultant samasa samasaha is called avyayi bhav avyayi bhavaha now the tradition has observed that the examples of this sutra are used by the speakers in a very narrow very limited domain that is of samahara that is of a group or collection therefore now the tradition has added a statement saying that samahare chaya mishyate the samasa derived by this particular sutra denotes the sense of samahara that is a group or a collection so this semantic condition for this compound is samahara or a group of collection thus this samasa becomes an exception to the dvigu samasa whose basic semantic condition is samahara sankhya purvo dvigu that is the sutra which states the dvigu definition let us look at the example when the meaning to be conveyed is a collection of seven gangas seven rivers called gangas the laukika vigraha is sapta ganga samarhata because there is samahara and this samasa always denotes samahara therefore we have sapta ganga samarhata so now we have this laukika vigraha transformed into an alaukika vigraha which is of this kind saptan plus jas plus ganga plus jas now because of this sutra nadi bhischa we get the samasa saudnya and then we get the pratipadika saudnya then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete both the sups so we get saptan plus 0 plus ganga plus 0 and then because now saptan is the purva pada and na is appearing at the end of this purva pada this na gets deleted by the sutra nalopa pratipadigantasya and therefore we get the form sapta plus ganga and then we join them together and we get sapta ganga now this is an avyay bhava samasa which is declared to denote the neuter gender by the sutra avyayi bhavascha into four and once this is declared the sutra rasvo napumsake pratipadikasya applies and shortens the long a at the end of ganga and then we get the finally derived avyayi bhava samasa output namely sapta ganga sapta ganga is the collection of seven gangas seven rivers when we use this samasa in the sentence we add the suffix su after it sapta ganga plus su because sapta ganga is an avyayi bhava samasa by the sutra avyayi bhavascha it becomes an avyaya and then by the sutra avyayada apsapaha su gets deleted however there is an exception exception sutra which says that when the avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a su is not deleted rather it is substituted by am so we have sapta ganga plus am and the sutra is now vyayi bhavad atomtva pancham myaha which we have already studied before so we have sapta ganga plus am then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form sapta gangam when it is used in the sentence we say sapta gangam namami i salute a group of seven rivers seven streams seven gangas similarly when the meaning to be conveyed is a collection of two yamunas dve yamune samarhate this is the laukika vigraha and we get the alaukika vigraha in the form of dvi plus au plus yamuna plus au then we get the samasa saudnya because of 2120 nadi bhischa then we get the pratipadika saudnya by krit taddhit samasascha after that we apply supo dhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 and we delete both the sups so we have d plus 0 plus yamuna plus 
and we join them together, we get Dviyamuna. Now this is an output of the Avyayabhava Samasa. Therefore, an Avyayabhava Samasa is stated to be denoting neuter gender and therefore the Sutra Rasvonapumsake Pratipadigasya applies and shortens the long A in Yamuna into short A and so we get the finally derived compound output of this Avyayabhava as Dvi Yamuna, a collection of two Yamunas. Now when we use this Samasa in the sentence, we add the suffix Su after it. So we have Dvi Yamuna plus Su. Dvi Yamuna is an Avyayabhava Samasa, so it is an Avyaya. Therefore this Su normally would get deleted because of the Sutra Avyayadap Supaha. But because Dvi Yamuna is an Avyayabhava Samasa, ending in short A, the Su is not deleted, rather it is substituted by Am by a special exception sutra, namely Navyayabhavad Atom Pavanchamyaha. And so finally we get the form Dviyamunam. Dviyamunam Pashyami. I see the collection of two Yamunas. These are the important examples of this particular sutra. Let us take one more peculiar example which has a little different behavior. A collection of seven Godavaris. This is the meaning to be conveyed. And we have Sapta Godavaryaha Samarhataha as the Laukika Vigraha. And the Alaukika Vigraha is Saptan plus Chasa plus Godavari plus Jasa. Now we have the Samasa Saudhnya by this particular Sutra Nadi Bhishcha. And then we get the Pratipadika Saudhnya. And then we are going to apply so, but just before we apply the subdeletion, we add the samasanta suffix ach, which is observed in the behavior of this particular compound. And this is particularly noted down in a specific verse, which we are going to quote in the next minute in a slide, which is, and this is noted down in the form of a verse which says Krishnodak Pandupurvayaha Bhumerach Pratyas Mrtaha Godavaryascha Nadyascha. So after the word Godavari, which indicates a river, the suffix ach is added as samasanta when the word Godavari is preceded by a number word which is what is happening here. So we add the samasanta suffix ach here. So we have saptan plus chas plus godavari plus chas plus ach. And now we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho. So we delete both the sups. So we have saptan plus zero plus godavari plus zero plus a. Cha in ach is a marker, so it is deleted. So we have saptan plus zero plus godavari plus zero plus a. Now, because of this a, uh, the long e in Godavari gets deleted by the sutra Yashya Ticha 6.4.148. And then we have Saptan plus Godavar plus a. Uh. Next, Saptan has got na at the end, which is deleted. And so we have Sapta plus zero plus Godavar plus zero plus a. Uh. When we join all these together, we get the compound output, namely Sapta Godavara, a collection of seven Godavaris. Now this is an Avyayabhava Samasa, which ends in short A. Now Sapta Godavara plus Su is the next step in the derivation when we decide to use the Samasa in the sentence. Because Sapta Godavara is an Avyayabhava Samasa, it is termed as avyaya and normally su would be deleted but because it ends, the samasa ends in short a, su is not deleted and it is rather substituted by am on account of the exception sutra na vyayi bhavad atom tvapanchamyaha. So we have sapta godavara plus am. When we join them together, we get the form sapta godavaram, sapta godavaram namami, I salute a collection of seven Godavaris. Now this ach suffix is added 
on account of this particular statement rather this statement notes this ach suffix it is krishnodak pandupurvaya bhumehe ach pratyaya smrata godavaryascha nadyascha sankhyaya uttare yadi for for the present purpose it is important to note that there is the statement ach pratyaya smrata ach pratyaya is added immediately after godavari godavarya nadya denoting the river name sankhyaya uttare if this godavari appears immediately after a word denoting number sankhyaya uttare yadi and therefore there is ach pratyaya which is added which shows the development of the language the development of the use of the samasa after having studied nadi bhischa let us now proceed to study the final sutra in this samasa vidhayaka sutra section namely 2121 anya padarthe cha saudnyayam this sutra has got three padas anya padarthe cha and saudnyayam anya padarthe is 7/1 which means in the sense of other meaning cha means and and saudnyayam is 7/1 which means in the sense of a term words continued are avyayam from 216 sahasupa from 214 samasaha from 213 avyayi bhavah from 215 samartha pada vidhihi from 211 vibhasha from 211 nadi bhihi from 220 even though the word vibhasha continues from 211 indicating an option the output generated by the application of this particular sutra is considered to be a nitya samasa for two reasons one the semantic condition anya padartha which requires additional words in the dissolution of the samasa and the second reason is because the output is a term saudnya and saudnya is a peculiar type of word to be used in the sentence and a term is never denoted by a sentence it has to be a compound to denote a particular saudnya nahi vakyena saudnya gamyate and therefore this has to be a nitya samasa semantically this is a bahubrihi samasa because of its feature namely anya padartha pradhana but formally the output behaves like an avyayi bhava samasa and in this case again panini gives preference to the form over the meaning and classifies the examples of this sutra as avyayi bhava samasas i mean put all these together we get the meaning of the sutra in the following manner any subanta is compounded with another semantically related subanta which denotes a river and when the compound qualifies the other meaning which is out of compound words out of constituents and also a term then the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava i repeat any subanta is compounded with another semantically related subanta which denotes a river and when the compound qualifies the other meaning which is out of compound and also a term then the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava i repeat any subanta subantam and also is compounded समस्यते विथ अनदर सेमेंटिकली रिलेटेड सुबंत समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह विच डिनोट्स अ रिवर नदी भिश्च वेन द कंपाउंड क्वालिफाइज द अदर मीनिंग आउट ऑफ कंपाउंड अन्य पदार्थे एंड ऑल्सो अ टर्म सौज्ञायाम च देन द रिजल्टंट समास समास इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव अव्ययी भाव here is an example so when we are referring to the region where ganga river is wild 
वॉट वी आर रिफरिंग टू इज अ रीजन उन्मत्ता गंगा यस्मिन देशे तो देश इज अ देश इज द मीनिंग विच इज आउट ऑफ द कंपाउंड दैट इज वॉट इज एन अन्य पदार्थ सो वेन दिस अन्य पदार्थ इज टू बी डिनोटेड उन्मत्ता एंड गंगा दे गेट कंपाउंडेड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर सूत्र गंगा इज द नेम ऑफ अ रिवर and now this laukika vigraha is expressed by this following alaukika vigraha namely unmatta plus su plus ganga plus su now this alaukika vigraha is termed as samasa by this sutra anya padarthe cha saudnyayam and therefore now this becomes pratipadika by the sutra krita dhita samasascha and then we apply the सूत्र सुपो धातु प्रातिपदिक यो हो एंड डिलीट बोथ द सुप्स सो वी हैव उन्मत्ता प्लस जीरो प्लस गंगा प्लस जीरो एंड देन वी हैव द पुंवत भाव ऑपरेशन टेकिंग प्लेस ऑन उन्मत्ता व्हिच गोज बैक टू इट्स रूट फॉर्म दैट इज उन्मत्त आफ्टर हैविंग रिमूव द फेमिन ऑफ इट्स आ सो वी हैव उन्मत्त प्लस गंगा and when we join them together we get unmatta ganga now this is an avyayi bhav samasa and avyayi bhav samasa denotes neuter gender by the sutra avyayi bhavascha and then this becomes a pratipadika denoting a neuter gender so the sutra raspo napumsake pratipadikasya applies and shortens the long a and we get the finally derived अव्यय भाव समास आउटपुट नेमली उन्मत्त गंग वेन वी यूज इट इन द सेंटेन्स वी एव द सफिक्स सू आफ्टर इट बिकॉज उन्मत्त गंग इज एन अव्ययी भाव समास इट बिकम्स एन अव्यय एंड बाय नॉर्मल रूल अव्ययाद आप सुपहा सू वुड बी डिलीटेड बट बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सेप्शन सूत्र दिस सू इज नॉट डिलीटेड रादर इट इज सब्सटिट्यूटेड बाय अम because unmatta ganga is an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in short a and the sutra is navyayi bhava datom tvavanchamya so we get unmatta ganga plus am and when we join them together by the application of the sandhi rule we get the form unmatta gangam unmatta gangam nama deshah a region where ganga is wild unmatta gangam nama deshah तो देश इज द अन्य पदार्थ एंड उन्मत्त गंग इज द अव्ययी भाव समास दिस उन्मत्त गंग इज ऑल्सो द नेम ऑफ दिस रीजन दिस उन्मत्त गंग इज ऑल्सो द नेम ऑफ दिस रीजन इट इज द सौज्ञा ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर प्लेस सिमिलरली वेन द मीनिंग टू बी कन्वेड इज अ रीजन वेर रिवर गंगा इज रेड we do the same processing and derive the samasa lohita ganga and when we say lohita gangam nama deshah lohita ganga is the name of a particular place where ganga becomes red similarly a region where ganga is black when this meaning is to be conveyed we do the processing in the similar manner and we get the form krishna ganga of the samasa and the Samasa is used in the sentence as Krishna Ganga Nama Deshah. So Krishna Ganga denotes the anya padartha, namely the desh, and Krishna Ganga is also the saudnya of that desh. So we have Krishna Ganga Nama Deshah. Similarly, a region where the river Ganga is slow in the speed, the samasa formed is Shanair Ganga Nama Deshah. so shanair ganga denotes a region it is also the name of that region and therefore we have the samasa shanair ganga so we come to the end of the avyayi bhava samasa vidhayaka sutras here are some observations the avyayi bhava samasa takes place with various semantic conditions stated in the sutras
सो नाउ वी हैव कम टू द एंड ऑफ द अव्यय भाव समास विधायक सूत्रस हियर आर सम ऑब्जर्वेशंस द अव्यय भाव समास टेक्स प्लेस विथ वेरियस सेमेंटिक कंडीशन स्टेटेड इन द सूत्रस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेक्शन वन ऑफ देम वी मस्ट नोट डज नॉट रिक्वायर सामर्थ्य as the mention of the output avyay bhava is equivalent to the meaning of one pad that semantic condition is vibhakti avyayam vibhakti so harau is the pad and the samasa is adhihari and adhihari is equivalent to harau so you don't need two padas being semantically interrelated as the input of this particular अव्यय भाव समास सो एंड सेमेंटिक रिलेटेडनेस बिटवीन टू पदर्स इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एज एन इनपुट कंडीशन एज फार एज दिस समास इज कंसर्न द अदर ऑब्जर्वेशन इज दैट इन सम केसेस ऑल द इनपुट सेमेंटिक कंडीशन इज दैट ऑफ अ बहुब्रीहि समास बिकॉज ऑफ द कंपाउंड बीइंग अन्य पदार्थ प्रधान लाइक उन्मत्त गंगम देश लोहित गंगम कृष्ण गंगम शनैर गंगम एक्सेट्रा द आउटपुट फॉर्मली बिहेव्स लाइक एन अव्यय भाव समास बट हियर फॉर पाणिनी द फॉर्म इज मोर इम्पॉर्टंट दैन द मीनिंग एंड देर फॉर ही क्लासिफाइज द आउटपुट एज एन अव्यय भाव समास एंड नॉट एज बहुव्रीही एज वी हैव ऑल्सो स्टेटेड अर्लियर इन कंक्लूजन वी कैन से दैट the number of sutras stating the avyay bhava samasa is less than tatpurusha samasas but there are several semantic conditions which are prescribed as input conditions formally an avyay bhava samasa behaves like an avyaya or indeclinable but the avyay bhava samasa ending in short a does behave differently this is an exception of course the output avyay bhava samasa acts as an agent or qualification of an action etc in the sentence where the samasa is used these are the texts referred to and we shall study now the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra in the next lecture thank you very much